Hey everybody, Jeffrey Way here with NetTouch Plus. So you know that on NetTouch, we've covered the popular Laravel framework quite a bit, almost since the beginning. And as you may know, Laravel 4 is on the horizon, and currently it's in sort of an alpha state, which means it actually is very usable, but I've received a lot of emails and comments in some of the articles that we've written, such as this one on Touch Premium, related to how do I get up and running with Laravel 4? Because you can't actually download it yet from Laravel.com, you actually have to use something called Composer and you have to clone it through GitHub. And this seems to be giving some people just a little bit of confusion. So in this lesson, we're gonna get everything set up from scratch. It should only take a handful of minutes. Let's get started. The first thing that you need to do, and you should do this regardless of Laravel, this is gonna be the future of PHP, is you wanna get Composer installed. So as it notes here, Composer is a dependency manager for PHP. It's similar to Pear, if you're familiar with that, or with Ruby on Rails, maybe Bundler, with Node.js, NPM. So it essentially gives us a way to specify the dependencies for an application and then run a single command to install or update them. It's a very modular way to work with your projects. And this can be incredibly helpful because think of some of the older frameworks, even Laravel 3 or CodeIgniter. Those are very much based on a framework's specific components. And so what ends up happening is for every single framework, they reinvent the wheel over and over. But with Composer, you can build your own framework using only the specific bits and pieces that you need. If you need to pull in this database component, you can do that. Maybe you wanna pull in some other type of package from this other framework. Well, Composer gives us the ability to do that. Now, before we can use it, we of course need to install it. So you will go to getcomposer.org and I will click on the Getting Started link. And what we need to do if I scroll down just a bit is we need to install it. Now you have two choices. You can install it locally or globally. Now, while there are advantages to installing it locally, honestly, I've had no problems whatsoever doing it globally and it's one less headache. So that's what we're gonna do here. So you can see, we just need to copy this command, switch over to the terminal and paste it in, and that's going to run the installer. Next, once that's finished, we're gonna run this command here. And what this is going to do is it's going to take the composer.far file and it's going to move it to our bin. And that way we can reference it by running composer rather than composer.far. So once again, you'd copy that and paste it in. And with those two commands alone, composer is successfully installed. To verify that it installed successfully, we can run composer and now we'll get a list of all of the various options that are available to us. Excellent. So now Composer is ready to go. The next step is we want to clone the latest version of Laravel 4 so that we can work with it. Now currently in development, Laravel 4 has the code name of Illuminate. It may keep that, it may not, we're not quite sure just yet. But what we want to do here is clone the app repo. So I will click on Git Read Only, that's fine. Switch back to the terminal and I will write git clone. This is assuming that you have git installed. If you don't, go and hunt down a git tutorial. We have lots on NetTuts and then come back. So we will go ahead and clone this repo and we're gonna call it L4 for Laravel 4. Great, so now if I CD into that directory and I list the files, you can see that we have successfully cloned that repo. But what I also want you to note is that we have this composer.json file. So if we take a look at what that is, it looks like it's requiring illuminate slash foundation, which has its own dependencies. And we're also auto-loading our controllers, models, migrations, and the test case. So now to install these dependencies, we can run composer install. Now, one thing that you might note at the time of this recording, it does seem to take a little bit longer than you would expect. That's something I'm not sure if it's Laravel 4 specific, maybe something related to the beta, but just give it a moment or so and it will install. And like I said, hopefully that will speed up in the future. And now we can see that we are installing all of these various packages that are available through Composer. If you'd like to view a list of all the packages, you can go to packagist.org. Now I want you to note here, notice as it's installing, it's bringing in even Symfony components. And that's the great thing. We're leveraging highly tested components from other frameworks, but we're using it in this Laravel framework, which is really cool, I think. And now with that, we have a new installation of Laravel 4 ready to go. So why don't we use PHP 5.4, if I do PHP-V, 
you can see I'm using 5.4.9. And if you're familiar with 5.4, you know that there's a built-in surfer that we can leverage. So let's go ahead and do that. PHP, we're gonna run the server in this directory at localhost 8888. And also I'm going to set the document root. That's something you might be familiar with where we wanna make sure that the document root is actually set to Laravel's public directory. Well, we can specify that via the T flag and I'll set it to public. And that's it. Now we can see that PHP is listening on port 8888. And as simple as that, Laravel is up and running and we got hello world, excellent. Okay, so to make sure that it works, let's run a quick resource and then we'll be finished up for the lesson. I will open a new tab and CD to the directory and open it up within Sublime Text 2. Now there are some changes, but by and large, the API is going to be mostly the same. Just lots of things have been rewritten to be more testable, and there's still a handful of things that you'll need to do differently in Laravel 4. We'll be covering all of that on NetTuts and Touch Plus Premium early in 2013. So if I open up the app directory and browse to routes.php, this is going to be very familiar to you, other than just one slight change in how we run wildcards. So what we see here is, if I get rid of all of that, we are listening for when somebody requests the default route, and when they do, we're going to load the hello view. If I open up the views folder, you can see it runs hello world. That's exactly what's being loaded. If we'd like to customize this a bit, maybe we want to listen for when somebody requests, I don't know, maybe the name, something like that. Okay, well that's a wild card. Now we can say return view make. Perhaps we'll load maybe a show view. And let's send through a parameter. The name will be equal to name. And that's going to be accepted. So this means when somebody requests slash John, well, then we're going to load the show view and we're going to send through a variable called name and that will be equal to the string John. All right, let's try this out. Create the view, show.blade.php. We're going to leverage Laravel's blade engine. And now, like before, we will say hello, name. And that's it. Let's try it out. So with the default route, we still have hello world, but if we do hello John, now of course we do get hello John. And finally, to finish up, why don't we also create maybe a resource? So this is something that's new to Laravel 4. We can say route resource, and this will be a resource for dogs. And the controller that we want to be responsible for this will be dogs controller. So what this is going to do is create the necessary restful routes for dogs. So to show a dog, to delete a dog, to update a dog, to view all dogs, all of those routes will be generated by Laravel for us. Now let's create the controller. So I will switch back to the terminal and we will run PHP artisan controller. We're going to make a new one for dogs. We'll call it dogs controller. Great. So that's done. Now if I go back and open up the controllers directory, we can see we have the new dogs controller and it's filled it up with quite a bit of boilerplate. So we have the index method for showing all dogs, perhaps from the database. Create would be to display a form for creating a new dog. Store would be once you do create the new dog, you're going to post to the collection at which point the store method will run. To show a specific dog, to edit a specific dog, to update one, and finally to delete a dog. So we're not working with a database here that's beyond the scope of this install Laravel tutorial, but just to give you a quick idea, we could say return all dogs, and then maybe if I scroll down, here's the next one, return show form for new dog. And then maybe, let's skip that one for now, return displaying single dog with ID of ID. And then finally, we'll say return edit dog with ID of ID. All right, that should be fine for now. But there's one problem. If we go back and we try to run this, we would expect that we should be able to go to slash dogs and get something. But now we're getting this class dogs controller does not exist. And if this is your first time with Laravel 4, this will likely very much confuse you. It certainly did for me. At the time of this recording, what's happening behind the scenes is for performance reasons, Laravel has a static list of all the classes that need to be auto-loaded. 
But since you added this new controller, it doesn't know about that. So hopefully that will be automated in the future where Laravel will redump the list of controllers to auto load. But at least at the time of this recording, we need to do that manually. And we can do that by running composer dump auto load. And that's it. Now we can see generating auto load files. And if I run it again, now it does recognize that dogs resource. So we go to slash dogs. We're following the restful pattern here to show all dogs. If we want to show a specific dog, we would go to dog slash one. And then of course you would grab the dog from the database that has an ID of one. If we want to edit the dog with an ID of one, we go to slash edit. And then of course, to update the dog with an ID of one, you would put to slash dogs to delete or destroy. You would send a delete request to slash dogs slash one. But nonetheless, we are successfully working with the alpha version of Laravel 4. And as always, for more tips, tutorials, and screencasts, always visit NetTuts.